Hey everybody, my name is Tim Bryan. I like to make videos on sports analytics and coding, specifically Python. Uh, today we're going to go over how to pull NFL Next Gen stats using the NFL Data Pi package. So I'm sure everyone that watches football, you've seen the Next Gen stats pop up on the screen during the game. I believe it's sponsored by AWS and Amazon. Um, but yeah, this package actually allows you to pull that data and get a look at it. Um, some of it's 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 pretty interesting. A lot of the stuff, you know, you wouldn't be able to tell just from a simple look, looking at the box score. You know, things like separation, receiver separation, and speed, and things like that. So, all right, let's dive into it. A um, couple dependencies for this project. Uh, Pandas is the first one. Pretty standard data science library. Um, the NFL Data Pi package. We're gonna use Matplotlib. To visualize the data and then if you want to style it you need to import the style library from within matplotlib so um, I, I'm turning off the display max columns uh, parameter for pandas and the reason is uh, there's a lot of columns when you pull this data so um, you know we want to be able to see everything that we have access to so I'm gonna define the year here uh, as 2022 so far um, the season's not complete obviously but uh, the data starts in 2016 for next gen stats. So, and, and I should have mentioned I'm importing this NFL data pie package and abbreviating it as NFL so we don't have to type that all out every time. But the function we're going to use is import underscore NGS underscore data. And there's three kinds of data you can pull from here. Um, and the parameter is stat type. So, you can, we're, we're going to look at passing today, but you can also do receiving and rushing. And the data will be a little bit different for those. So let's import it and get a look at the data. Um, as you can see here, the first season uh, available is 2016. Um, something to be aware of is this week column. You can look at specific weeks, like week one through 18, or even beyond to the Super Bowl and playoffs. But if you look, if you filter down to week zero, which we'll do shortly, that's full season data. So for 2022. If you filter down to week zero, it'll just be the full season data for that for that year. So this is full season data for 2016 up here. Um, we can see things like average time to throw for quarterbacks. So how long they have to throw before they're getting uh, defenders in their face. Uh, average completed air yards. And air yard is how far the ball travels um, from the point of where it's thrown until it's either caught or, or uh, not caught. Uh, average intended air yards, so how far they're meaning to throw it, and then the differential between those. Um, this aggressiveness stat, I'm not exactly sure. This is a um, NFL Next Gen stat calculated by AWS, so I'm not sure what that is. Might somebody might want to do a little research into that. So, uh, a couple other fun things here. Let's see. Um, the things we'll be looking at today are we're going to be comparing average time to throw to Let's see, where is it? Completion percentage above expectation. So the, the thought process behind this is average time to throw is how much help the quarterback's getting from their offensive line. And completion percentage above or below expectation is how much the receivers are helping them out. So a high average time to throw would mean that the quarterback theoretically has a good offensive line or they're mobile and can get outside the pocket. Uh, completion percentage above expectation is let's say it's well above average, it would mean that their receivers are good enough to catch balls that may not be uh, as easy to catch. So they're getting help from their receivers. Uh, so those are the two metrics we're going to look at today, but there's a ton of things here. And there's even more if you want to look at receiving and rushing data. So like I said, we're going to filter down to week zero here. And week zero just indicates full season data. Um, if you wanted to copy this and look at a different season, you would, all you would need to do is change this year variable. So we're going to set the season equal to that year variable and then reset the index. And the reason we're resetting the index is because, you know, when we filter down to certain data, it's going to retain this number, like 3,000, whatever. It's going to retain that number, but we, we want it to start at zero for whatever we filtered it down to. So let's print this out or let's run that. Um, <clears throat> So I think a good way to visualize things is to center the both axes that you're concerned with at the average. So we want to get a look at the average time to throw. And the way we do that is call the average time to throw column and do a, use a call a, the mean function on that. So to get the average, same thing for completion percentage above expectation. So 
let's just get a look just so we know like what the average time to throw is uh, for this year about 2.79 seconds and completion percentage above expectation oops typo there is negative two percent so it seems like across the league wide receivers are underperforming in terms of they should be catching two percent more passes than they are so um you know, this is all calculated by AWS. It's their own, like, machine learning metrics, so you can take it as you will there. Um, next, let's take a look at uh, visualizing it here. So we want to define the layout. So this is just the size of the image that we're going to put the data on to visualize. Um, we're going to use auto layout, so it moves the axes around and makes it look uh, clean. Next, we're going to uh, initialize a couple empty lists for our X and Y data. And then we'll loop through for each quarterback in the index. So it's gonna go zero, one, two, all the way to the end. Um, we're going to append the average time to throw for that row. We're gonna append this to the X data, by the way. We're gonna look at, grab the average time to throw for that given quarterback minus the average overall. So um, this will give us, you know, if, if somebody, if a quarterback's a little bit above average time to throw or below average time to throw, it'll center our axis at zero and it's a better uh, visualization. And we're going to do the same thing for the Y data, which is completion percentage above expectation minus the average. Um, we're going to throw this into a data frame, create some subplots, and then we'll create a scatter plot. And I've uh, changed a few things here. We're going to obviously we're going to use X and Y data um, here as we defined above. But um, I'm going to make the points in the chart a little bit bigger. If you're using more data, like from multiple years or something, um, you may want to shrink this down. But uh, I think it's easier to see when the scatter plot points are big. And then we're just gonna change the color. Um, these set position spines functions, um, this is how you center it at zero, uh, both the X and Y axis. And again, our axis is set at the average of both of our uh, data points. So we can see the distance for each respective quarterback from the average. Uh, we're gonna eliminate the borders. Um, set up some ticks so we can see, you know, it's easier to count where the uh, point is on the chart. Set some X and Y limits. You may want to adjust this depending on what kind of data you're pulling. And then we're going to annotate the player's name and the year next to their data point. So we know what we're looking at. And this is just some more annotation. It'll make more sense when I print this out here. So here's our, here's our data points. Um, yep, QB average time to throw versus completion percentage above slash below expectation. So let's see, you know, you can see these, I've labeled each axis. Most of the quarterbacks are centered right around the center, uh, right around the average of everything. But then we've got a few outliers, like somebody like um, Daniel Jones, Marcus Mariota. They're super far right on the axis, meaning they have almost 0.4 seconds more time to throw than the average quarterback. And, you know, Somebody like Daniel Jones, if you've seen him play this year, it may not seem like he has a ton of time to throw, but what he does is he is pretty mobile. He'll run outside the pocket and give himself more time to throw. So uh, the AWS metrics must, machine learning algorithms must take that into account. Um, so yeah, everybody in this quadrant one here, they have a lot of time to throw and it seems like their receivers are making above average catches. <clears throat> quadrant two here, meaning they have limited time. Somebody like Aaron Rodgers, not a lot of time to throw, but his receivers, since he's in the positive here, his receivers are making better than expected catches. Um, down here, this is not the place to be. Limited time to throw, receivers are making below average catches. So Baker Mayfield um, has not been given a lot of leeway with the rest of his offensive staff. Um, and then finally, in the bottom uh, quadrant four here, these quarterbacks have a lot of time to throw but the receivers aren't making great catches. So someone like Justin Fields, um, he also hasn't had a lot of uh, attempts, passing attempts this year, but yeah. All right, so that's how you make this chart. Um, I'll probably continue to dive more into NFL Next Gen stats, as well as I'm gonna be having a uh, machine learning, NFL machine learning, probably uh, multiple videos coming out soon. So if you like this kind of stuff, uh, feel free to subscribe. But yeah, thanks for watching. I'll post the uh, GitHub link for all the code in the description. Thank you.